Hey everybody and welcome back to WFO's 12 Rigs of Christmas. So today we got a good one for you. Of course, uh, everybody knows that I got a passion for CJs and this is John's CJ. John, tell us uh, what year your Jeep is. It's a 77. So it's a 77 CJ7 and uh, about the only thing stock about it is that it's called a 77 CJ7. It's about it, tub and this much frame. Yeah, a little bit of frame. So uh, over the years, we've done a lot of work to this Jeep. I've had the pleasure of driving it on the road. I've never driven it on the trail. Um, let me tell you, it is a fun Jeep to drive and it's got all the good stuff. Uh, your radio's beeping, buzzing all over the place. Anything you want to put in a vehicle for survival, for Rubicon, for getting around town, you've done it, John. I think so. Heated seats. Oh, you even got heated seats? Even Santa needs a heated seat. Um, I think we can probably start a little bit just sitting here inside. My favorite part of this Jeep and one of the obvious uh, elephants in the room, check this out right here. We, we decided, do we call this a glove box, John? Glove box, gun box, whatever you like. And it will fit a legal shotgun in there? It will. Uh, looks like your lock's gone. We're going to have to fix that. Um, stainless steel, your friend Gordon built that for Gordon you? Gordon built it. I bought, the, I bought the Jeep from Gordon originally. It was nothing like this at the time, but the tub and the roll cage and the seats and this. So, you know, and at WFO, we haven't done a lot to this. Everything we did is underneath suspension wise, but everything he's done is kind of in the direction of what we like to do. So sitting in here right now, if you sneak back around behind me a little bit and take a look. So overhead center console right here, um, obviously you always have to have the rear view mirror mounted to the roll cage. So when the window's down, you can see behind you. That's right. You got a lot of radios. So you want to tell us about your radios, John? So a two meter 440 ham radio, Rubicon repeater, Jamboree repeater. This is an APRS radio. So APRS and we got, um, we got uh, the sheriff or whatever on the other frequency, stereo for tens and scanner for whatever's left over. And then no more CB radio, huh? No CB. Oh, man. Well, there's one here, but it doesn't turn on. It's in there. It doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of speakers, everything tied into the roll cage, um, but everything is functional. We got uh, external speakers here for your radios so you mm -hmm. can hear better, right? That's for the comm radios, yeah. Y yep. Any Anytime you put in a, a ham radio or anything like that, you got to do an external speaker because over the engine and everything else, you got to be able to hear it. Uh, and then dome lights and, of course, custom bikini top built. Uh, to fit your roll cage, mm -hmm. and as we'll see in a little bit, the roll cage has been put to use. Um, <laughs> yes. If you want to sneak around and look uh, at the at the dash here, I see the sun the dash is sunken in, and what do you got there? Auto meter gauge. So it's a full auto meter gauge package, yeah, and and uh, um, over the river switches and and yeah. And you have a standard heater still hooked up in here. Not the stock heater, it's got a Summit heater. Aftermarket from Summit, yeah. Yeah, yeah the stock heater didn't work too and well. And of course, manual transmission, so NV4500. So what makes me happy? A CJ, what makes me happy? A V8, which we're gonna get to that. And then manual transmission, now what, at, what are you running for a transfer case? Uh, it's a Atlas two-speed 5.0. And it's five to one because John does a lot of snow wheeling and it's all about you know, slow wheel speed, not digging in the snow. That's right. All right. Tilt column, big center console. Now, let me ask you this. I remember, isn't this center console an uh, ice chest? Uh, also an ice chest? Uh, yeah, that doubles as an ice chest. So when you got your uh, glove box up here for your shotgun and your tools and wallet and cell phone, you got your ice chest right here, which is also padded. So you don't want your elbow to get, you know, scratched up. Sit on. Yeah, you got to yeah. be comfortable. And as always, Shoulder harnesses attached to the roll cage uh, are a must for driving around on the highway and for everyday use. Um, no, no four points in this one, huh? No, no. Um, well, let's it's get out. Rig. It's a trail rig for sure. Let's get out and uh, look around this thing. A little hard getting out with my Santa pants, as you can see. I had a little blowout right here, but you know, I think we're going to be fine. So. John, you got YJ doors on this thing, right? Yeah. So this is a must on a CJ. YJ hard doors for your half doors. And then uh, it's nice to have the YJ mirrors on the half doors as well. Um, just easier to see out of, easier to use. Mm -hmm. So let's walk around to the front here. So right away, we can tell the front end has been stretched forward a bunch, right? How much do you think you got this front end stretched forward? I don't know how far back the back is, how far up the front is, but it's about 108. 
108 and a half. We just measured. It's 108 and a half wheelbase. And stock, um, and stock is what, 92? Yeah. yeah. So the front stretched almost, shoot, the grill's almost center of the tire. Um, as you can see right in here, uh, this is work we did at the shop. The frame is plated all the way to the back of the wheel well. Um, these are our shock towers in here from probably five years ago. Has 2.0 12 inch travel, travel coilovers in the front. Curry anti rock, air bumps. Um, and then for your axle, what housings you got in here, John? They're Spider Tracks housings. So Spider Tracks housings, and this one is a three and a half inch tube? Uh, this one's a three and a half inch tube, yeah. Yep, yep. And 538 gears, mega high nines in the diff. And air lockers. Air lockers front and rear, and you've got comp air lockers. I got front comp and rear air lockers. This. Um, he used the factory uh, 9 inch 35 spine air locker for a while, but the clutch, and, the clutch gear keeps getting worn out and pops out, so what the heck, we went with comp lockers and we went with the 150 PSI pressure switch. That's right. Uh, so there's more pressure locking those lockers. So um, how power steering on this one, and the box is moved and mounted all the way up front and high right here with hydro assist. Um, one of the things I really like about this Jeep, John, is this winch. Tell us about this winch. That's a giggle pin winch, and giggle pin's a British company. They make a dual motor uh, winch. It'll carry 200 feet of line and better, it's, better it's, line It's speed. basically like the Monster 8274. It's designed after an 8274, about two and a half times the line speed and 14,000 pounds of pull. And gear driven. And gear and driven. Just you know tops off the old cj style right and, well i'll tell you it'll pull you out of the bowl in the ice absolutely yeah um so we were actually when we when we built this front end or we worked with john built the front end we put it in there and linked it but we were able to get high steer in here but the tie rod is underneath the steering arms drag link on top just misses the frame when it cycles up track bar is tucked in there so this has a three link in the front um and you're running uh these tires right here are 41 and a half inch 41 and a half high rock, high rock radials. radials. Yeah. Now, the deal is he wanted the pretty much the biggest tire he could get in a radial and a good snow tire. The only other uh, option is a 42 inch MTR in a radial, and you opted for the IROCs, and this was a while ago. Um, and then those are Raceline beadlocks. That's right. Now, another cool thing that I like about this is those beadlocks have, I think, five and a half inch backspacing. They right? do. They You're have a ton of backspacing. In, so you have a really good scrub radius when you turn this thing. Um, old school poison spider tube fenders, and then uh, nothing fancy for rock sliders. And then when you come around to the back on this thing, this is where it gets fun too. So um, you rolled this thing, right, John? Uh, more than once, but, uh, but the last time I did more damage, yeah. So when he rolled it, the back of the frame got damaged and he brought it to the shop and said, hey, I need to fix the frame, but I want some more wheel base too. That was part of the rolling scenario. So. We're about right here, John. So right about from the rear body mount. That's right. Right about from the rear body mount to the back. Uh, we went ahead and just did some, I think it's two by four box tube, 120 mm -hmm. wall, and uh, did a whole new rear frame section. And at the same time, uh, we're thinking, ah, you know what? Might as well do trailing arms, right? Might as well. So take a look at that. That is really sweet. So that's one of our WFO trailing arms. And even though there's only a single shock on it, we got the shock moved forward of the axle, tucked up in the wheel well, just a nice tube shock tower. Um, it has a Curry anti rock rear sway bar, air bumps in the rear as well. And the fuel tank is actually right behind the back seats, That's right? right? So fuel tank in the back seats allowed us to move the axle back and get to that 108 and a half. And it still has a regular tail light um, and not a full comp cut, right? Um, I'm not a fan of cutting the whole corner of the Jeep off, John. Well, cutting the whole That's corner of the Jeep off, off is, is, uh, is the way to get a really long stretch in the back, but I really like the CJ look and I wanted to kind of keep it. Well, so do I. I agree with that. Um, you keep all kinds of tools, all kinds of equipment in the back here. That's right. There's um, a couple action packers, one with welding stuff and one welding stuff and tools and one with, uh, with parts and then there's a set of tools in between. And some people may not know what that is. That's What's a fire that? extinguisher. And if anybody who hasn't seen a, uh, an element fire extinguisher, I did that for a living and that is the bee's knees. And if you saw 12 rigs of Christmas last year, Stassi's Jeep catch on fire, we definitely could have used that thing. Flashback. Got fire, fire, fire. Good. 
let this be a lesson to you guys in fire extinguishers. <laughs> um, so what do we got going here, John? Uh, Show us how, how this system works. So this is a, um, I'm, I'm a chainsaw guy and I do a lot of winter wheeling. And when you're out there in the winter, you really need to have a chainsaw because trees fall and you need to get rid of them. They need to get out of the, if you don't pull, if you don't cut them and get them out of your way, your choice is to go around. Now you're widening the trail and damaging veg. So uh, 25 inch bar on a still uh, MS362 carry spare fuel. And I car also carry a spare bar. Um, so if I get pinched, I can cut it out. 36 inch bar and uh arb uh arb jack and then show us how this thing works i know that we designed this at the shop you did kevin built it so this is a swing away and recovery straps d-rings all the stuff just like my jeep almost only i don't have the uh the uh chainsaw and then clicks right back down swings closed tools are in the tailgate and uh, this thing's got big brakes all the way around. Got the spider spider tracks brakes, right? With wheel woods. That's right. Yep. Backbone. Um, I noticed you got the uh, hooks welded to the axle for putting it on the tow rig, right? Yeah. I, well, actually, you cut those out, and I added them after uh, after I got it. Back. Nice. Well, I think we need to do what everybody wants us to do, and that's open up the hood and look underneath the hood. Okay. So this engine went in, did I put this engine in? Did we do it at WFO? I think we did. You did. Um, it had a, it had a, a LT1 in there before and I started having problems with the fuel injection because of the new gas. And I think we put this in in about... Maybe 10 years ago. I yeah, think. I would say 2010 is yeah. a good guess. So this is an all aluminum 5.3 and it comes out of a 05, 06, 1500 Chevy. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where I take my hat off and use my trusty Santa, Santa phone here because it's kind of a special engine and uh, I want to read about it and tell you guys what it is. So it's all aluminum. Most six liters, four eights um, are going to have cast iron block aluminum heads. So this one's all aluminum and here's what we got. So this is, um, it's a Vortec 5300 L33. So it's called L33 engine. Uh, the VIN code is a B. Uh, it's aluminum block version of the LM7, marketed as a Vortec 5300 HO, meaning high output. Uh, instead of the LM7 dish pist pistons, the L33 uses the 4.8s flat top pistons. It also uses 799 cylinder heads, identical to the 243 castings found on the LS6s and LS2s. Lacking only the LS6 spec valve springs uh, and the hollow stem exhaust valves. This combination raises the compression from nine and a half to one to 10 to one. And the L33 also used a unique camshaft only found in this engine. Uh, other engine specs, it has uh, 50 thousandths duration, or, or let's see, at 50 thousandths duration are 193 duration, 42 lift, uh, 116 LSA. Uh, as a result, power increased by 15 horsepower. So this is 310 horsepower from the factory and 335 foot-pounds of torque. It was only available on extended cab, short bed, four-wheel drive pickup trucks. And only 25% of 2005 made pickup trucks had the L33 engine. That's a lot of information about this engine, but it's all aluminum, it's lighter, it's got more horsepower than your standard 5.3, 10 to one compression, and let me tell you, it rips. And it's got a lot of torque. And a lot that's of what torque. I was after, it yep. was the lightweight and the torque. I, I've driven it. I enjoy it. It's super fun to, to be in. Uh, you have the dual diaphragm power brakes on this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the typical disc disc Corvette master cylinder that everybody uses. Um, one thing we did when we put this engine in, like always, if you sneak around right here and look from the backside, that is a mechanical clutch fan. So we still use the truck fan with a clutch. Makes a little noise when you fire it up. Um, he has a standard radiator uh, not a dual pass, so the hose is coming out of the top and sneaking around. This is the Cobra head that we always use for the intake. Um, you can see a little strut bar coming across the top from the coilover towers. Um, this is where John's got to tell you about this stuff. So what is going on here, John? That's a lot of battery action, and yeah, so, I can see a welder there. So yeah, starting battery, uh, the accessory battery, it's got a Genesis smart switch on it so it knows when to charge which one and isolates them when they need to be isolated. And it's got a Premier Power Welder 
And uh, the other thing it has is a, is a uh, compressor. Do you remember putting that in? So John asked us, he <laughs> said, hey, I really want to put a York compressor on my engine. And you had it on the old tube board engine. I did, I did. Um, or LT engine. And we said, ah, oh, we'll go for it. We'll make a bracket. There was nothing out for the LS engines. That bracket fought us, John. So we thought we had it lined up. We thought we had it perfect. Kevin did a lot of work on that thing. Fired it up, it would squeal. Adjust it a little bit more, belt would squeal. Adjust it a little more, belt would squeal. It's finally working good now. It is. But it, it took a little bit of work to get it right. And I told everybody I will never build that bracket again. It took, it took taking the bracket apart and grinding a 30 second of an inch Just off the tiniest bit. And welding it makes back all together the and it fixed the alignment. Yep. Yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a nightmare. And, but the nice thing about the York, if you don't know what it is, it's belt driven compressor. It's an old AC compressor. Um, the higher you rev the engine, the more air you can make, and that thing puts out a lot of CFMs. A lot of air. Um, so you got to, this is an oil separator, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, you got to keep the Yorks oiled. You got onboard air with a ton of, ton of power, um, 110 power for running a grinder, lots of air. Um, it's a great recovery rig, and you can run your welder off of that. Um, as far as anything else that goes on, does anything else stand out on this rig, John? No, nah, pretty plain. Except other that than it's that. just everything. <laughs> so. Take a look underneath. You can see that with the high pinion front and the links. It, oh, it has our uh, diff skids on there. It does. So it has the diff skid for the Mega High 9 in the front and in the rear. Um, so if you pan over to the rear underneath there, past the trailing arm, you can see the diff skid for the Mega High 9. We've been selling a ton of those lately. Then you can also see the belly pan and cross member underneath there if you look straight up. And so, you know, from the outside, it looks like a stretched kind of custom built CJ7, but as you start digging into this thing, it has everything. I've had it for a long time and keep putting stuff in. Everything, it. including a smashed window it frame. It does have a smashed window frame. Oops. <laughs> so, uh, that's that, courtesy of Walker Hill. That'll happen when you're in too much snow and ice, but everything, it went all the way to the roof and everything uh, stood the test of time, right? Yeah, flipped it back over and drove it out. So if there's anything you would do different on this build, um, what would you do differently? Well, those of you that know me know I also have a, a YJ that's built similar to this, mm -hmm. and it's at 114, and it makes a difference. So basically, you're talking about six more inches. Everybody could use an extra six inches. I thought it was everybody could use an extra inch. Now okay. it's everybody could use an extra six inches. Giggity, giggity. What about a bigger tire? Uh, no, I think this is an ideal tire. 41 has to work good on this one. All right. Yep. Well, I'll take that. So I hope you enjoyed John's CJ7 on WFO's 12 Rigs of Christmas. Don't forget, 12% off till the, actually till Christmas Day. Uh, go on the website, buy anything you need, get ready to build your CJ like this. See ya.